Take me away from home Show me all the places I've never known I will chase the night Race all of these broken dreams in flight And we'll fly establishments that are being flooded, actually those establishments that are in an area which they shouldn't have been in. We call them the protection zones. Normally according to the environment rules, a big lake like Lake Victoria, we need to have 200 meters around the lake protected. But probably you must have seen that all of these uh, uh, the hotels, beaches we have been seeing are actually at the lake itself. So what does that mean? The water is actually coming to reclaim its area. It is coming back home. But because it is finding uh, hotels, it's finding beaches, houses, then that's where you find that they are flooded. So for us, from the water resources point of view, those are areas where the lake should go. In 1964, actually, the lake level went up. It went, it was 13.41. That is the highest ever we have reached. As I speak now, the lake level is <coughs> at 13.13. So we haven't reached the highest the lake has ever reached. But around 1964, the issue was people hadn't encroached on the protection zone. The wetlands were still intact, the river banks were still intact, the forest cover was still intact. So the impact was there, but it was not felt the way it is now. So when you see people saying a hotel is flooded or the people are flooded, we are saying the people are being told by the water that you are in the wrong place. And you should actually be warned and start moving. We right now, uh, according to the weather forecast, we expect increased re uh, amounts of rain for the second half of April and May. And we're estimating that we might have an increase of about half a meter of water. So if already people are flooded, then obviously the situation will get worse. More is, yeah. So one thing of course we are, we, are, we are telling people is if you have been in a protection zone and you have disobeyed the rules, can you start moving out before the worst comes? Quote where you are supposed to be because the protection zone is clear. Of course uh, the, the people have not complied with the rules. But the water is actually helping to enforce. But we, we are not happy to see people dying. That, that's the point. We are not happy to see the developments being affected and all of that. That's why we are trying to manage the situation. That's why right now, around uh, January, we are releasing about 1,000 cubic meters of water per second. But right now, we have doubled that amount, 2,000. So actually, what you see now, the level you see now, is the result of the action we have taken to increase the amount of water flowing through the Nile. If we had not taken that action, you would already probably see 
all these establishments fully submerged by water. So we are conscious of that. We want to see how we manage the situation so that we save lives, we save the investments, but we also don't want to kill people along River Lake Choga, along Lake Karbat, but also along the Nile. So we are managing the situation uh, so that we don't kill people either side. But again, the point is the water is finding you where you are not supposed to be. To Ugandans and the Ministry of Water and Environment is the responsible agency to ensure that this water is managed and used for the benefit of Ugandans. So it is the Ministry of Water's uh, responsibility to actually decide how much to be released and how much not to be released. So the power generators are users of water. The way you are using water to drink, the way the hotels are using water, the way fish are using water. So whatever they do is regulated by us, the Ministry of Water. Uh, so whoever is saying that they are the ones who have refused to use the water and that's why the water is coming, no. When, when, we, when the, the dams are set up, they apply to us for a permit. We call it a water abstraction permit. And within that permit, we tell them the amount of water they are supposed to release for power generation. We also tell them that if you don't need this water for power generation, you cannot speed it, you cannot allow it to go without our authorization. So right now, as I told you, by around January, February, we had authorized ESCOM, which runs Kira and Narubali, to release 1,000 cubic meters of water per second. Because we want to store that water in Lake Victoria. As I told you, Lake Victoria is our storage reservoir. It would be like you being at home and you have water in your tank. So we cannot afford to get that water to just be allowed to, to go without uh, being used beneficially. But when the levels go beyond our expectations, as, as I mentioned, because of increased rainfall, then we allow them to release more water, some of it for power generation, others they spill. As, as I speak now, ESCOM is using some of this water to generate power, but some of the water is spilled through the sluice gates. So it is going without generating power. So whoever is saying they are the, the cause of what, no, they are not the causes, and if we find that they are trying to do something that is not acceptable, then we take action. But we have a good working relationship with them. We actually work very, very closely together. We have regular meetings. We ensure that we support them. We ensure that they, 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 they do whatever is expected. And all the dams on the night, the three dams, the ESCOM operated in Naruba and Ichira, the, the, the Bujagali and the Simba, are all coordinated. When we tell ESCOM the amount of water to release, we also communicate to Bujagari and Isimba. But right now they also inform each other on how much water is being released. So ideally, the starting point is at Chira Narubari. That's where the tap is. If that tap was opened fully, the lake would completely dry up. That's the only outlet. So we do it to control the amount of water getting out of Lake Victoria so that the water remains for, the water has to remain high enough for the fish to grow, for navigation to take place, and also for the water generally to be available for drinking, for Kampara, for Entebbe, for ginger, and other activities. So we cannot afford to treat the many, many lessons we are running as individuals. There are many lessons we are running as families, as organizations, as a country. And if we don't take action, and ensure that we practice what we are not practicing because we are taking things for granted. For sure we are taking things for granted. So some of the basic things that we are running now, I do hope that we will put them into practice. So that if we have a, a case like Corona coming up, then we are well prepared. Similarly for this issue of raising water levels. It happened in 1964. Many people, of course, were not born. A number of young people were not born, like you. I wasn't born as well. So, we only hear stories. But those who were there felt it. But the problem was not as bad as it is. So sometimes when you are telling people, sometimes we want quick wins. We don't want to look at sustainability. And that's the challenge we have been having, that we are investing in things that will give us benefits in one year. 
But when somebody say, do something so that it protects you for the next five years, people don't want to do it. That's why people sometimes don't go for insurance. Somebody say, I'm wasting my money and all of that. But as we continue seeing some of this, I think the question or we throw to ourselves, first of all, as government agencies, is what more can we do to ensure that we don't get such happening? We have good laws, we have good policies, we have good plans, and we have tried to implement them. But I must say that we have not had support from the ordinary people. When they tell people to get out of the wetland, people come up with the spears. You, ha you had the Rubiji and all of that. Yeah? People come and they want to kill you because you say you are taking our land. I'm hoping that when people see this, they realize that when you tell them to get out of the wetland, you are not actually making their lives difficult, you are trying to protect them. These establishments, some of them, of course, uh, uh, could have been put in place without doing an environmental impact assessment. All of a sudden, you find an establishment is there. And by the time it is there, maybe you can't do much. Again, we blame ourselves. Maybe as law enforcers, we need to do more. Now the question is, can we now, from today, pull the strings and look at the missing link and do what we're supposed to do? But the ordinary Ugandan, are you going to leave it to government when the problems come and catch you? What about you, the media? How much can you do? The private sector? What can you do? And to me, I think what all of this is telling us as Ugandans is it requires all of us. Government showing the way, but all of us jumping in. And I'm hoping that after this, we really get a lot of support from the private sector. We we'll get a lot of support from the ordinary people. And maybe the ordinary people come in using their power and say, you cannot construct this hotel here. But when you go, Sometimes, of course, you have good technical intentions, but you don't get either the financial or the moral or the political support. But I think right now we need each other. You can't leave it to government. Again, you can't be everywhere. 